cell phones and pagers, blackberries. Um, disconnect your Duro phone. We're all glad they do it for you.
Good afternoon. Uh, Operation Phantom Thunder is into its uh, third week with uh, U.S. and Iraqi uh, uh, security forces conducting operations, as you're well aware, in the northern and southern Baghdad belts, as well as Diyala and uh, Anbar uh, provinces, and still in Baghdad through Fardal Kanun uh, working on hotspots. As expected and as been reported, uh, this offensive has involved some very difficult fighting. Uh, this fighting against Al Qaeda in areas where they've long had uh, freedom of movement, as well as uh, time to prepare elaborate defenses. Uh, during uh, Phantom Thunder, U.S. and Iraqi forces have captured nearly uh, 500 enemy and found over uh, 50 major weapons caches. The most remarkable thing about these gains is that the actions are increasingly a result of local Iraqis coming forward, providing tips, and uh, responding to those tips and finding these caches. Uh, they know where the bad guys are hiding, they know where the weapons are, and they're giving them up to the Iraqi security forces as well as uh, U.S. forces operating, uh, particularly in Bakuba, in favor of a better option. Uh, these caches have contained uh, stores of mortars, rockets, as well as IED components. In Bakuba, uh, we have rooted out what can only be described as a shadow uh, government set up by Al Qaeda. Uh, we have found a courthouse, jail, and torture houses, which provide an uh, indicator of the type of inhuman justice one could expect if Al Qaeda was in charge. Uh, we've cleared over 120 deeply buried IEDs, numerous booby trapped houses, some that were so extensively booby trapped that instead of being, uh, uh, I guess, uh, EOD taking them and uh, disarming them, they had to be blown up. Uh, these facilities and the local Al Qaeda authority demonstrate more than anything I could say about the nature of the enemy and their continued willingness to commit horrific atrocities against the uh, innocent Iraqi people. Uh, in concert with these operations, Phantom Thunder also includes aggressive shaping operations by U.S. and Iraqi Special Operations Forces that are going after Al Qaeda leadership, uh, as well as Jaysh al Mahdi special groups and uh, car bomb networks that are located throughout uh, Iraq. Within the city of Baghdad, uh, U.S. forces, along with uh, 12 Iraqi security force brigades, uh, continue their disrupt, clear, and retain uh, operations in the 10 security districts uh, in Baghdad through uh, Operation Fard al Kanun. As Phantom Thunder uh, continues to squeeze Al Qaeda and other insurgents, uh, we expect them to oppose our progress by trying to inflict high numbers of casualties among the Iraqi people, as well as uh, coalition forces by using asymmetric uh, weapons like suicide bombings, high-profile attacks, and buried IEDs. Uh, in Afghanistan, uh, NATO inter uh, NATO's international security forces and the uh, Afghan security forces have seized the initiative, as I stated, uh, during the spring offensive in 2007. We have yet to see a summer offensive from the Taliban. On July 2nd, Operation Adalat concluded in the south with over 250 Taliban uh, killed as well as Taliban sanctuaries, operations, and lines of communications disrupted. In the eastern region, Operation Maiwan, uh, this marks the first Afghan National uh, Army offensive led by them and uh, involves uh, U.S. forces in support. Uh, this is a significant step in the development of Afghan National Security Forces. Maiwan is aimed at separating the enemy from Taliban, uh, from the populace, excuse me, and removing the Taliban from the Grozny Belt. Uh, as I close, I think we, it's important to remember that tomorrow we celebrate our 231st uh, anniversary of our freedom. And as we celebrate here, uh, we should keep in mind that our very best that our nation has to offer is standing on point and fighting uh, for freedom. I ask that you keep your, uh, our uh, servicemen and women uh, in your prayers, along with their family members. And with that, uh, as we celebrate our 4th of July uh, tomorrow. And with that, I'll take your questions. Yes, ma'am. Sir, um, 
Turkey's military chief again today criticized what he's calling a lack of cooperation uh, from the international community regarding the PKK problem in northern Iraq. And you mentioned last time you spoke to us that the U.S. is cooperating with Turkey on this. Can you be specific about what that cooperation consists of? Uh, Turkey has been an ally with us on this global war on terrorism, that, and I know that's no secret. Uh, uh, we've worked with them. Uh, we understand their concern with regards to the PKK terrorists that operate both in southeast Turkey and that uh, have set up some safe havens within northern Iraq. Uh, we continue to work with Turkey uh, as they prosecute the war on terror. Uh, we continue to uh, work with them as an ally uh, in this global war on terrorism. Uh, we have uh, several uh, opportunities where we have uh, worked with them, uh, both as a cross-section of intelligence uh, with the Turkish uh, government, uh, Turkish military particularly, and we'll continue to do so. Since they don't think it's enough, um, do you, could you sort of say how you assess the successfulness of your efforts? Well, I, I tell you, from, from a military perspective, we have a great relationship with the military in Turkey. Uh, we do do the training. Uh, as far as uh, any other initiatives, it might be something you might want to take on the policy side uh, with regards to what we're doing with Turkish. But uh, we've worked with them uh, in the past. We continue to work with Turkey. Right now, our focus is on Iraq. Uh, our military's focus is on Iraq and the situation in Iraq. And I know, as the Secretary of Defense has said, uh, any uh, disruption or, uh, or up in northern Iraq would not be helpful at this time. Yes. Yes, ma'am. The U.S. Army released a report yesterday uh, indicating that a gunner shot at two friendly positions in Afghanistan in March of uh, 2006. The individual who was responsible for that was not actually questioned. We're just wondering if he was going to be um, questioned. Will he be disciplined at any point? Well, I can't speak specifically on the issue you're talking about, but I can tell you that any time there are issues or allegations or incidents where friendly fire uh, is uh, takes place. They are thoroughly investigated by the commander, uh, and we don't normally dis discuss those things while they're in the investigation. But uh, normally, uh, the commander takes those particular investigations, and we take those particular pieces seriously, uh, and, uh, and and we do investigate them to the fullest extent. Yes, ma'am. On Friday, we understand that the Joint Requirements Oversight Council um, agreed to validate the Army's request for seven, more than 17,000 MRAP vehicles. Um, how fast can those vehicles be made? Has the JROC actually approved 17,700, which was the Army's request? Um, how fast can they be, be produced, and can they be produced in enough time in the next, over the course of the next year? to get those 17,000 to Iraq? That's a good question. I can tell you that uh, they have validated 17,700 for the Army, and I believe 3,400 for the Marines, and approximately 300 for our Special Operations Forces. Uh, I can tell you as the Deputy Director for Regional Operations, I'm not the best person probably to ask as far as how quickly they can be produced. That's probably something better served for for the uh, for the G uh, the J4 section and piece, but I can tell you that uh, I know that the commanders in the field want those produced as quickly as possible to get them out to our our soldiers and uh, Marines uh, that are out there uh, in the fight. So, and that's about all I know on that. Yes, sir. General, I noticed that you mentioned both in talking about Iraq and Afghanistan the number of uh, enemy that have been killed recently. <clears throat> Do you think that the enemy body counts is a, a real measure of of uh, success in these operations? Well, I can tell you that uh, personally I don't think that that's necessarily a, a, a indicator, uh, particularly when we're looking at uh, military uh, efforts alone are not going to win the fight, uh, whether it's Afghanistan or whether it's in Iraq. Uh, you know, we're primarily providing security in order to shape uh, and give time and space to the Iraqi and Afghan governments so that they can formulate their security uh, forces in order to take the fight to the Taliban and take it into Al Qaeda, uh, particularly uh, in those two countries. So uh, body count is not necessarily uh, something that we get into. It's not something that I advocate as a success measure uh, or gauge success on. But I can tell you that uh, uh, those are just indicators that we're taking the fight to the enemy, uh, that the enemy is still there. Uh, it's also uh, indicators that it's still a dangerous place out there. And, uh, but as far as uh, success can be measured, I think we measure success on the security, uh, primarily securing the population. 
uh, enabling governance to take place within Iraq and Afghanistan. Those are the important indicators that we look at. I just follow up, but when you mention these indicators, whether it's the number of enemy killed or the number of deeply buried IEDs or weapons <clears throat> caches that are found or, in fact, the uh, statement that there are increasing number of tips coming from local Iraqis, those are all things we've heard over and over and over again over the last four years in innumerable briefings. So I guess my question is, what indications are there that anything is going better now than in all those previous times when we're also given these sort of positive indicators? Yes, sir. And, and I would say, uh, I get what you're, what you're trying to get at. I would probably say we ought to wait until General Petraeus comes in in September and makes this assessment and kind of ties in those pieces. Uh, we're reporting uh, uh, figures, and I understand we've been reporting figures uh, all along, but uh, what I'm saying is, is I don't tie that to overall success. There's a number of indicators and pieces out there that we tie together to indicate success. In this particular case, we are making slow and steady progress with regards to military operations. But as I said, uh, military operations alone is not, uh, is not what I gauge as the overall success there. Um, as, you, as you know, General Pace, in, in two consecutive briefings here, uh, mentioned that in his view, uh, public perceptions among Iraqis, how they feel today versus how they felt five years ago, how they'll feel in five years from now, are better measurements. It's a better metric for gauging progress or, or lack thereof in Iraq. Would it be fair to say that that is the way the Joint Staff is starting to think about how to measure progress by looking at public perceptions in Iraq? I'd say that's one indicator. Um, I, I, like I said, I'd probably wait till General Petraeus comes in and gives his assessment on how things are with regards to Iraq. And I think that's going to happen in September. Uh, I don't have the exact date on that particular piece, but it is an important indicator. Uh, you know, the people, it's important, and people are always important when you're talking about their country. Those are sovereign countries. Uh, you know, and, and people and protecting the people and the populace are absolutely critical uh, to conducting operations there. In Ambar, uh, what's important is the people are coming forward because they're tired of the indiscriminate killing and they're pointing out the IEDs, they're pointing out the weapons caches. Uh, these are all accelerants, these are all uh, things that the enemy uses in order to create high profile attacks and to create mass casualties. Uh, so th is that a positive sign? Absolutely a positive sign. Is it something we want to continue happening? Absolutely want to con uh, continue it. Uh, and those type of initi initiatives are spreading. They're not just in Ambar, Salah Din. They're also happening in Diyala. Uh, so these are uh, are positive. Uh, we see them as positive signs, but uh, you know we have cautious optimism with regards to those because there is an enemy out there that continually takes a look at those same type of indicators, those same positive trends, and tries to target those and tries to take uh, action against those you positive think trends. Data though on, on that. I mean, does the military conduct any? any I don't data? have any polling data. No, sir. Will General Petraeus be using to decide whether the surge is succeeding? And, and ma'am, I, I really don't know. I don't want to speculate for General Petraeus uh, on what exactly the metrics are he's going to use at this time. I really don't know. Uh, General, within the past couple of weeks, a number of NGOs and news organizations uh, reported that the number of civilian casualties in Afghanistan, the number of civilians killed in Afghanistan uh, by uh, coalition forces had exceeded those killed by the Taliban or Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. At the time, uh, the U.S. military strenuously denied that conclusion. But I understand within the past couple of weeks, the number of civilians killed by coalition forces has indeed, even by the U.S. military's own estimates, surpassed uh, those killed by enemy forces in Afghanistan. Is that the case, and can you provide those numbers for us today? I don't have the numbers. Uh, I, I've seen the same reports you've seen with regards to the to the NGOs that are reporting those particular numbers. Uh, I can tell you that it's difficult for me to believe that you can actually capture a, a accurate number with regards to the terrain in Afghanistan, some of the remote areas where some of these operations go on, and the fact that you have motivations out there that are different. Not to say that uh, all the numbers are wrong, but to absolutely say that uh, we, when we conduct operations, we go out and investigate thoroughly, especially when there's accusations of uh, civilian casualties. Uh, in a number of cases, in recent, uh, we've gone out and investigated where they have claimed there was civilians killed, and in fact, those were unfounded. Um, 
uh, and, it, and in cases, uh, we go to great lengths, as I've said in the past, in order to mitigate civilian casualties. Uh, I think you've seen demonstrated on a few occasions times uh, where we have actually bypassed targets, uh, not engaged targets, because we've had civilians in the area. Uh, our forces use positive control of indirect fire means, uh, whether that's air or whether that's uh, artillery. Uh, we have people who are qualified on the ground that bring those particular type of weapon systems on the target. Uh, for example, you probably recently read in the press uh, what happened in Diwaniya uh, with regards to indirect fire from the enemy into a forward operating base there, firing approximately 75 rounds uh, into that camp. Well, what I can tell you is that camp, uh, those rounds that were fired, didn't, all those rounds did not necessarily fire into the FOB. Uh, matter of fact, uh, a great amount of those rounds actually fell short of the forward operating base and, found it, and fell into the city of Diwaniya. Uh, the F-16 that was launched was not only launched to protect uh, the FOB, it was also launched to protect the citizens of Diwaniya from these indirect fire attacks. And when the F-16 was overhead, we had positive ID on three buildings where the fire was emanating. Uh, we launched the F-16 uh, with guided munitions onto those three buildings, three targeted buildings uh, with positive ID of enemy. Uh, they hit their intended targets and had secondary explosions out of two of those buildings. So we use precision uh, weapon systems. The enemy, on the other hand, fires from highly populated areas once again, fires in densely populated areas, concentrations of civilians, fires with an indirect fire system that is not an accurate system, not a point weapon system, and uh, indiscriminately kills civilians. So that is, that's the difference. I guess, uh, but returning to my original question, has the U.S. military, have coalition forces dropped any firm denial uh, that coalition forces have killed more civilians than enemy forces in Afghanistan. Are, are, are you yeah. backing away from that claim? Well, and to be honest with you, like I said, I don't track from the Joint Staff perspective, don't track civilian casualties. I know that the theater tries to go and investigate as they happen, and, and they go out and do thorough investigations of those sites. But, so I would, if to answer your question, if we're backing off or do we, are we denying uh, I wouldn't be able to do that from here. And so from the Joint Staff and from the J-33 regional operation perspective, I don't have an answer to that. I can tell you that we do go investigate a number of those occasions. We have gone investigated. We have found those claims to be unfounded. But we have found that in a number of occasions, the Taliban uses those civilians as human shields. Uh, and in some cases, when we do target, uh, you know, and there are civilians that have been, uh, have been killed as a result of targeting, those are reported. Uh, Yes, sir. Now, about that Diwaniya incident, the, I believe the uh, press release uh, that was issued on that uh, said that there was a review underway as to whether the appropriate firepower by coalition forces was used to respond uh, to the mortar positions. Can you explain to us what that was? Obviously, you're pointing to the, to the use of the F-16 as, as an appropriate position targeting, but I mean, what exactly is the review about? If it well, was? As I said, whenever there is accusations that civilians were casualties, they're, they're investigated by the commander. Uh, every commander does that as a matter of course, and it's the right thing to do. Uh, so in this particular case, I'm sure because of the accusation, once again, it was, was reported uh, that there's a commander out there that's doing the appropriate investigation. They take a look at those uh, particular reports to see if they're founded or unfounded, and, uh, and, and then report when they have complete... Uh, investigation and the facts are made available. And just, uh, just out of curiosity, if not for the record, why does the U.S. military, if they conduct these investigations, uh, if they make uh, payments to families who have lost loved ones as a result of coalition strikes, why does the U.S. military not provide or keep uh, accurate records of civilians, as best they know, killed by coalition forces? And as I said, from the J-33 on the Joint Staff perspective and from my foxhole, I don't keep track of those particular pieces. Uh, there might, and commanders probably do at their level, uh, and commanders downrange. It's probably something better served to take downrange to the tip of the spear uh, in those, uh, with those commands that probably do commanders uh, do keep track of uh, operations and when civilians are, in fact, uh, become casualties. Yes, sir. Uh, General, can you give us any statistics to back up uh, what you said at the beginning of your briefing regarding the apparent lack of a spring or summer offensive by the Taliban? What do you base that on? Can you compare the number of attacks that they made at this point last year to this year? Can you give us anything that 
backs up that claim. Right. I, I primarily deal with trends uh, with regards to that. So as far as specific numbers, I can tell you that the attacks are down uh, significantly. Uh, as far as the exact numbers, I don't necessarily have that, and that's not how I track up here on the, on the, uh, on the joint staff. Uh, I can also tell you that uh, they have suffered a number of casualties to include their senior leadership. Uh, the architect that are spring offensive, the Dula Lang, was taken out. Uh, and there are indicators that they are having problems trying to find somebody to fill his particular shoes as well as others that have been taken out. Um, uh, so those are the indicators we use. It's primarily the fact that uh, based on previous uh, springs, uh, based on, uh, on indicators that we had that there was going to be a, a spring offensive this particular year and it hasn't necessarily panned out, uh, that's what we've used. And now we're past and through the spring. Well, when you talk about attacks, I mean, if, if we talk, talk about Taliban attacks on civilians, for example, which seems to be the way they operate to a large extent, because they're not involved in pitch battles with coalition forces to a large extent, are you saying there are fewer attacks on civilians by the Taliban this year than last? What I'm saying is, and, and you got it partially right, they did target coalition forces. As a matter of fact, they made a concerted effort last year to target coalition forces in the south as an effort to fracture what is considered uh, ISAF when they took over, particularly the Canadians and the Dutch. Uh, so with that, this particular year, they tried to do a similar piece, uh, particularly against coalition forces in the south once again. Uh, and particularly in this, in this case, uh, they took on and they're starting to try to take on the national police because they see that as a as a weaker enemy. Uh, the Dutch went and responded and took the fight to the Taliban, resulting in numerous Taliban uh, forces. Uh, what's also starting to happen, we're starting to see shape, is the Afghan National Army standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Taliban on their own uh, and defeating the Taliban. Uh, that you probably would not have seen in the past, and now you're starting to see more and more of that. Uh, we'd like to see the national police there uh, you know, increase in their capabilities and working hard to make that happen as well. Yes, ma'am. The British government says they're investigating any potential links between their car bomb incidents and al-Qaeda in Iraq. What evidence, what information have you seen that might indicate uh, that there would be links? Is there any indication in recent months or years even that uh, insurgents or fighters in Iraq have moved into Europe, have moved into the UK. Is there any indication yet the kind of technology used has any parallel to Al Qaeda in Iraq? Has the British government come to the US military, which maintains, of course, a forensic database on all the car bombs and IEDs in Iraq? Has there been any discussion in your world about this? Not necessarily in my world. I mean, I've heard some discussion in regards to uh, car bombs. Uh, anytime there's a car bomb, uh, you know, and they try to correlate. I know that uh, some of the, uh, the partners that I've had, uh, particularly our British uh, partners that we've had discussions, uh, this is primarily a homeland uh, defense type of, uh, of lane. Uh, but with regards, uh, you know, you don't want to rule out any sides here from whether al-Qaeda involvement to one extent down to somebody who is just uh, uh, acting out on their own. But, uh, uh, you know, it, with Iraq, the, the car bombing piece, uh, I know that there's a lot of forensic data that's being developed. Uh, I think that's going to probably better serve to be asked for Homeland Security uh, because they're pro it's a policing function. And I believe the, uh, the, the British allies that I talked to specifically uh, when this happened, just through a course of a discussion, uh, stated that that was a police function going on in uh, Britain uh, and that uh, they're continuing to uh, work that and roll up and uh, arrest uh, these people as they as they come across them. Have you seen any indications of movement or interest by Iraqi insurgents or Al Qaeda in Iraq in moving from Iraq into Europe, into the UK, into Germany? Uh, I have not. But I, what I'll tell you is, is you know, this uh, a war takes two sides. Um, you know, and in this particular case, you know, the enemy has back since 9/11 has been trying to destroy the freedoms here in this country. Uh, as well as in Europe. Uh, that has never stopped being an aim. Uh, the fact that we took the fight to them in Iraq and we took the fight to them in Afghanistan uh, is, is desynced them, made them a little more difficult. But, you know, I don't think that their aim has, has changed. This United States was their first battleground by launching 9-11. Uh, the fact that they're out there trying to do that, I don't think is any secret or any surprise to America nor Europe and the Brits.
Yes, sir. General, you described at the beginning of your briefing the uh, large number of deeply buried IEDs. Could you give us a little bit more detail on what these IEDs are looking like as well? Do you see any kind of shift in tactics by insurgents towards burying these mines uh, for, for any reason because they're harder to detect or because they're more lethal, they're directed against a certain kind of uh, coalition or U.S. technology? Right. Um, what I'll tell you is, is, as you're well aware, when General Petraeus talked at getting at these areas where we have not been at with any continued presence, uh, and getting at these areas where the uh, where Al Qaeda has had an opportunity to build VBIEDs, for example, of which in Bakuba uh, we have discovered nine. Uh, one of which uh, recently was a fire truck IED. So they're building them larger. Uh, they they're using trucks. Um, uh, in these particular cases, uh, in areas where we haven't been, they've had the opportunity to emplace these particular uh, uh, IEDs in areas, and then through the course of time, uh, they have a lot of patience with regards to these particular weapons. Uh, they become camouflage. They become uh, over the top, and then it's just a matter of time before they uh, either through uh, whatever the triggering device uh, engage them. Uh, are they buried deeper? Yes, because it gives them time. But getting at these areas, what that does is restrict their freedom of movement in these particular areas, makes it harder for somebody with a shovel to dig something very deep. Uh, and uh, also, you now have the local citizens that are out there identifying these people and turning them in. Uh, it's made it more difficult. I can tell you that in Ambar province, where we've had these tribal initiatives go on, uh, we have had 70 percent, uh, you know, of IEDs particularly that have been found and cleared in those particular areas. We've also had a 40 percent reduction in attacks. That's a direct result of local populace getting involved, uh, similar to what we have here in the United States. If somebody went out and did something suspicious activity, uh, it would be reported to the police. The other thing is, is they're reporting these particular things to the Iraqi security forces. Uh, as well uh, in larger numbers. And, and that, in fact, is due in large course because they're building a credibility uh, with, uh, with the people. Uh, we have built these neighborhood watch programs through these tribes. We're getting them integrated into the police support units that are established, getting to be a part of the Iraqi security force structure, and that is working out very well right now. Last question, please. Yes, sir. Any figures, General, for uh, how many um, casualties are continue to be caused by IEDs, especially since the surge began, and uh, particularly in the last few months where, where the U.S. deaths are so high? Um, Secretary Gates has given a round figure of roughly 70 percent. I wonder if that's on the increase, and can you be more specific than that? Well, like I said, from my perspective, we deal on trends and percentages, not necessarily specific numbers. But I can tell you that uh, one of the things that has happened through the neighborhood watch and the uh, uh, and safe neighborhood uh, initiative within Baghdad and setting up security checkpoints and other things, it's made it harder for uh, Al Qaeda to get at the civilians. Although they still execute high profile attacks, but about 70 percent, 75 percent of all attacks or these type of attacks are, are basically going against coalition and Iraqi security forces now as opposed to uh, civilians. Uh, in that, about 70 percent, as Secretary Gates said, uh, causes uh, U.S. casualties. So you don't have specific numbers, but how are you developing your trends if you don't have specific numbers? Well, I get numbers? those, sir. I get those reported. That's probably uh, uh, commander's downrange. We get uh, reports provided to us. Uh, we kind of track those trends. Huh? Okay.